Why are there so many great girls in this game? It's not even fair to a straighty like me. All right, all right. Welcome back to Friend Sim. Let's continue going down our like route list. What's next? Okay, we just did volume five. I loved her. I hated him. I think that was the point. Oh gosh, volume six of Text and Envy Green. Looks like we got this battery pack kid. I remember him ve very much from Troll Call. And I think that's, oh uh, gosh, L word? Everyone's favorite? <laughs> anyway, that is definitely not Friska. Anyway, armed with your fresh heaps of hard won cultural knowledge, you continue on your journey. Troll life sure is complicated, not to mention troll romance. You really aren't interested in getting into all of that. Your life is complicated enough, and adding an additional level of angst on top of that does not sound ideal. Friendship is all you can handle right now. Ah, and boy, do you love to handle it. Whoa. Just your fingers all up in there and squish that stuff around. Yep, L word and we got a uh, cuprum and follicle. Okay, let's get to you. I'm worried about you, man. So worried. I'm terrified of this blue-haired lesbian. Let's get into it. You are ready to meet someone new, but you have no idea where to go. You're kind of hoping you'll just bump into someone. Oh, while you're thinking it, you do. You bump into someone. The troll takes a step back to look at you. Eyebrows lifted in surprise while you sputter apologies. Then you notice the color of the symbol on her shirt and your blood turns to ice. Thank you. <laughs> Given what you've picked up about troll society, she'd probably be well within your rights to attack you or at least treat you in some with some very hurtful insults. Ooh, what a cool theme. Where have I heard this one before? I should check the credits on this later and see if they list the songs. But I've heard this one somewhere. I swear I have not just sat- I did not listen to the album, so I'm like hearing like a bunch of songs. Uh, I'm also disturbed by the fact that she doesn't seem to have ears. Is this loud? I'm just gonna turn the volume down a little bit more. I think I'm fine on my end. Okay, so let's see here. Maybe I'll just turn- touch the- Touch the thing. There we go. And put the volume back up to how I had it. That's roughly in the right place. Okay. Oops. Sorry. L word. Well, hey there, little buddy. You look kind of lost. Everything okay? Huh. That was a lot friendlier than you expected. Of course, they would have to make her friendly. Are you kidding me? That said, this troll's look is intimidating. She's smiling at you, but the leather jacket and undercut makes you think you would you shouldn't mess with her. They also look really dope. Like maybe this is someone whose name you should would look really nice in your address book. Look. You know you've been pretty non-discriminating with your friend taste so far. You're grateful for every taste of affection thrown your way, but you can't admit you've barked up the friendship tree of some weird, real weirdos. But this time, you really want to be friends with this girl. In fact, it feels like earning her approval might even raise your opinion of yourself or your social cash. She's just like seriously cool. You tell her that you are lost, not that you have anywhere to be. Just seeing where the night goes, huh? I've <laughs> been there. <laughs> I could tell you some stories. Oh, man. I don't want to be rude, but you're an alien, right? You confirm. That is one of the few solid facts you know, and you're gonna hang on to that with your hand, with both hands. While they're still your hands, and not your grab pods or your gesture appendages or whatever. 
Neat. You can call me L-word, by the way. <laughs> the blushing is cute, but I'm worried I don't want anything red or black. Let's just go. I bet you have all kinds of cool alien stories. <laughs> you want to hang with me? I know a place near here to grab a drink if you want. Does she mean platonically, or is she asking you out? It's really hard to tell. She's so cool and disaffected. If that was a date suggestion, she's got to be the smoothest mother trucker around. You're kind of hoping she just wanted to get to know you better. She's beautiful, but it seems like going on a date with her would be a lot of pressure. Mostly you just really, really want her to like you. She brushes a piece of lint off her jacket and your desperation for her attention grows. You say yes. Aw, yeah. Alien time. Let's go. Wait, mm. Wait, come on, you can't even... Can't you just hang out with someone without some kind of rigmarole? Are you fated to always be bombarded with branching choices, choosing randomly between fates that almost seem to end in some kind of violence? That's meta even for me, man. Scri script writer, you okay? Okay. <laughs> There's actually two places we could go. You wanna try the closer place or the farther place? Fine. Fine! You'll make another choice. Okay, time to save. Not that we have to worry about a streak because frickin' Zebra tanked my last, like, streak. Ugh. Three friendships flawlessly executed in a row, gone down the drain because of this tool, who didn't even listen to anything I said. Sweater off. Let's go. Okay. Let's choose uh, the closer place. Why the heck not? You don't want to wait any longer than necessary for that delectable friendship. You tell her to take you to the closest place she knows. Ah, cool. Turns out to be pretty close. Crosses the street and takes you down a flight of stairs to a little underground bar. When you walk in the door, you already you are ready to do some befriending. But L words seem dis distracted. Uh oh. You follow her gaze and see another cerulean blooded troll girl with a buzz cut and a snake bite piercing, sitting alone on a bar stool. As you watch, the other troll looks over at Elward and gives her a little smile. You clear your throat and Elward seems to abruptly remember your presence. Well, we arrived. The hangout place. You can take it from here, right? I gotta go. Oh no, she found another person to romance. Ah, crap. Yep, that was fast. Okay. She lost interest in us so fast. Farther. You tell her that there, you're in no rush. The farther place is fine. She takes off in the same direction as she was walking before you bumped her. You follow behind, trying to act like you totally belong here, next to this genuine troll babe. You walk next to cool people all the time. It's practically a hobby. After a couple blocks, though, she stops short. You narrowly avoid bumping into her again. She finishes it. She fishes her palm husk out of her pocket, and you can see that it's vibrating noisily. She looks at the screen and theatrically rolls her eyes. Ugh. Ugh. This is so annoying. I'm sorry, but like, there's just this thing I have to deal with, I guess. I swear to hell. She just wants an excuse to see me. Like, it's, like, transparently obvious. Like, how she keeps flirting with all my friends, too. Or just magically shows up places we used to go together. It's honestly kind of pathetic. Like, you're trying so hard to make it seem like you're over me that it just shows you aren't. LMAO. You know what I mean? You may not understand the specifics, but it's kind of clear that she's including you in some kind of social situation she's dealing with. Wow, that's some 
That's what you do when you're ready to be friends with someone. You're basically just skipped to the front of the line. You nod and look sympathetic. You totally get it. You tell her. You have an ex like that too. Who is she even trying to fool? <laughs> right? It's like embarrassing that we even dated. We were totally gonna request combat assignments on the same ship too. <laughs> so dumb. Anyway. Sorry, but I gotta get back to my hive. She just keeps bugging me about some stuff she left there. I keep telling her I don't think it's even there. But she says she has all her belongings itemized or something. Shake my head. Such a dork. I'm like the best thing that ever happened to her. You keep nodding vigorously. Your neck is starting to hurt from all the nodding. You tell Elward that she's obviously too good for whoever this girl is. I mean... I know, but I gotta deal with her stuff anyway. Anyway, sorry, it's literally so dumb, but it won't take long. She's like, terminally punctual. Oh my, oh, she already sent me her ETA on the, like, on, uh, what? Oh, is that, that's like Google, but it's Gorgle Maps. This is real softball. No one needs to agonize over this decision. You tell her you don't mind at all. She starts to head off, but then she stops and looks at you. Your brow, her brow furrows. Uh, you know, you know, for an extra alternial. Uh, I get it. Ex not extraterrestrial, we're extra alternial. You're kind of cute. Oh, jeez. You start to feel flustered as she peers at you more closely. Are you gonna have to make it clear once again that you're only interested in friendship? Ugh. Romance. I just want friends. <laughs> I'm getting an idea. My ex thinks she's so cool because she's a jade blood and they have, like, a sacred duty or whatever. She makes a complicated motion with her hand. From the context, you gather that this is the troll version of jer a jerking off gesture. You file away the implications for that one to consider it for a later time. Oh wow, so your f friend is like horny, I guess, but she's very anal, apparently. Anyway, she's probably never met an alien before. Definitely never dated one. Do you think, could we pretend to be a thing? Like, Red Rom? Until she goes away? She'd fully crap herself, I swear. Just, you know. Don't fall in love with me, kid. Really don't, though. Okay, okay, L word. Calm the heck down. Your heart is beating at an unusual rate, and not even because of fear this time. Fake dating? Again? Do, do trolls do this a lot? There must be some cultural context that makes them turn a fake relationship for security. Well, the fact that they have to, like, are expected to juggle, like, four relationships at the same time of various degrees of romance. Yeah. It's complicated. On one hand, you're an experienced fake dater by now. Elward could check your references. On the other hand, you know how this ends. You know this ends with you falling in love with her. That's literally no fake dating situation that has ever ended differently. The last fake relationship you did agonizingly circled the rim of romance before falling out and into your hands for a sinking friendship rebound. But it was a close one. You might like a quarter... You might be like a quarter of the way in love with her already. She looks like troll Natalie Dormer. That is definitely way too dangerous to say yes to this. Fake date or fake date? Does it really matter? But... Let's go into this. You grasp her hands, your eyes shining. Yes, you do tell her. Yes, you will fake date her. You are ready to drive into this thing together, side by side, for as long as she needs, with your whole heart and mind, whatever it takes. Whoa. Whoa. That's some... You are, like, really ready to go for it. Like, about to jump right in. Maybe this is a bad idea. I don't want to lead you on. Oh no, you overdid it. You shrink back, mortified. No, you tell her you weren't gonna fall in love with her. You weren't even thinking it. Just thinking about helping her with her awkward situation. Uh-huh. Hey, you mentioned your ex earlier, right? Is that recent? 
Like, were you trying to rebound with me or something? Because if it's recent. I mean, I get it. Breakups can be hard. I mean, mine was fine. Completely mutual. But I get it. Your ex only exists in your imagination, but L word is giving you an out here and you're going to take it. You nod, trying to look sad. Breakups are hard, after all. That part isn't a lie. Just a well-known truth of life. You know what? I can blow up my ex for now. I'm gonna take you out. Oh, sweet! Take you somewhere special. Where you can forget. Have a little me time, you know? I think you deserve it. Okay, a little hiccup there, but maybe you managed to turn this around. You feel broken that she thinks you're newly heartbroken, but it's comforting that her reaction is trying to cheer you up rather than pouncing on you at your most vulnerable like some other trolls would do. Actually, she's being really nice. Maybe this friendship train is on the right track after all. Makes me nervous to think, though. Ah, sweet, are we at some, uh, we're at some troll cafe. Awesome-tastic. But there's- is that another girl? Are you gonna leave me to flirt with this other girl? Okay. L-word takes you to what appears to be a coffee shop? It has all the trappings of a coffee shop. Mugs, bean grinders, fiddly little machines with tubes, and tables of people working on husk tops. The smell of the air is not coffee, though. It's something earthier and a little spicy. You're gonna guess. Ground up grubs. Just a hunch. Here we are. Let's get something to drink. And wait for it to start. W wait for what to start? You let her choose your drink. She brings you a steaming mug of something. Hot. You sip it cautiously. Not bad at all. No legs floating at it or anything. Just so you know. I don't know what your deal is. But this place is kind of... You're an alien. Wait, what is it? Girls only? Okay. You're an alien, so... Uh, no one's gonna even ask. Including me. But just so you know the deal, don't worry, no. If anyone does ask, I'll say you're here with me. Because you're cute, so no one's gonna mind. <laughs> you feel your face get hot. Wait, no, you're not fake dating. You're no fluttery feelings here. Cool, you tell her. You love this place already. Wait, what is this place? This is... Excessively bodily forced poetry. Open mic night. All blood colors welcome. Now that she says it, you see a microphone sitting up on one side of the cafe. An olive blood is sitting nearby with a clipboard writing down the names of people who want to perform. Do you ever excessively bodily force poetry? You look back at her. She's looking at you with those heavy lidded eyes and that flirtatious smirk. Last time you let your enthusiasm get the best of you, she pulled back. But then she took you to these cool ladies only hangout. Oops. What was that? Saying yes hasn't led you wrong so far. Probably. Unless there's going to be some consequences you haven't gotten to yet. No, it's probably fine. You tell her that you've dabbled. You try to shoot her the same kind of coy look she's giving you. Is it flirting? Who can say? You're riding this wave of plausible deniability and you're never coming down. Really? I didn't think you'd say yes. That's so cool. <laughs> Dang, you should go sign up. I've never done it myself. But I like to come here and watch. You should totally do it. Until now, Elward has been pretty disengaged, but she seems actually excited about this. You gulp. You've never done slam poetry. But how hard can it be? You got this. You go up to the olive blood and put your name down on the list. Then you go back to Elward, giving her what you hope is a look as smooth as expensive brandy. Get ready, you tell her. She laughs like you're being corny instead of smooth, but it's good-natured, so it's okay. You settle down to watch an excessive bodily force poetry. Maybe she can pick up a few things. Before long, you notice a couple differences between this and slam poetry you've seen before. First of all, your unfamiliarity with troll culture is causing you to miss a lot of the metaphors. Oops. You think some of the poets' poems are erotic? People are reacting like they are, but all the body parts sound like some th someone did magnet fridge poetry with an intro to engineering textbook. 
It's all tubes and pushers and levers and sacks. You watch people around you try to react the same way they do. Okay, I can use I can use the space bar. This will fix everything. Second, troll slam poetry does not involve actual slamming. Several poets, it seems to be cooler colors of the rainbow end of their performances. And their acts with passionate violence against nearby chairs, tables, and even members of the audience. Artists, you guess. Temperamental. L word doesn't seem surprised. One troll with dark purple symbol breaks the mic stand in half over her knee. Elward sits up a little straighter, popping the collar of her jacket a touch higher and adjusting her hair. Oh, I'd die if she looked at me that way, Lameo. I wish I was that mic stand. <laughs> I never had a, a girl that mean. Always for the good girl spades, thinking I can change them. Like it'll be different with me, you know? If our hate is true enough, it's a bad habit. Nice trolls don't change. That's advice for you, kid. You don't know how to respond to this, so you just nod wisely. If you're being totally honest with yourself, seeing L word flustered makes you feel a little flustered too. Not that you're changing your mind about only wanting friendship, but you wouldn't mind if she looked at you with a little bit of awe she's giving the purple blood. Okay, finally it's your turn to perform. You got you got so into the show, you forgot you were actually going to do this. Now, walking up to the front, you wish you could forget again. It's clear you clear your throat. Silence, then a flash of inspiration hits. You've had trouble understanding the troll poems because of the social-cultural differences, so maybe if you load your piece with references to your world, they'll just assume it's good. You start listening, listing body parts you have. Knees, spleen, shoulders, you toss in a few celebrity names, Steve Jobs, Rita Moreno, and then you, in a more serious poetry voice, say, Numa Numa A, <laughs> Numa Numa A, Numa 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 A, keep with us, she rapids I don't know the words. Oh, dang it. Another idea hits you like a wet fish to the face. Maybe if you end this with some kind of violent gesture like the purple blood girl did, L World Word would like you more. You seek her out to face the audience and looking right into her eyes, you slap yourself in the face as hard as you can. There's a smattering of lackluster claps. No one looks impressed. A few grumbles echo around the cafe. You think. You think you may have just bombed. Your budding confidence is hit with a bag, big load of shame descending like wet concrete. But when you get back to Elward, she's grinning. Dang! <laughs> that wasn't what I expected at all. It's pretty funny, though. You must have some real abdominal sausages to get up there and perform like that. Nice job, alien. She gives you a wink. You start to perk up a little. After all, you don't need to be friends with the rest of the people in this cafe. Just this one cool troll girl. And it looks like making yourself look dumb has brought you two closer together. Honestly, though. I'm surprised you didn't do a piece about your breakup. Oh right, you completely forgot about your breakup. Or rather, your fake up. Ed Elward leans forward, her hands splayed on the table. Her black claws gleam in the low cafe light. You can tell me about it. If you want. Like, I'm over my breakup. But if you want to talk about yours, it's fine. I know sometimes it's like, really on your mind just right in there. You're starting to feel even less great about lying. You fidget uncontrollably in your seat. No, you know what? You're supposed to be making a friend here. Yes, in the past it's been advantageous to just go along with what other people are saying, what other people say until they like you, but you and Elward are really connecting. You don't want her just to like you because she thinks you're sad. You want it to be real. You take a deep breath and tell Elward you don't have a recent ex at all. You tell her you were just trying to commiserate. The atmosphere immediately shifts. Elward sits back and the warmth goes out of her face entirely. Aw, oh, no. What? Really? I love that face. It's so dead to me. <laughs> oh, it's so... Oh, my gosh. Oh. Oh. That's not really cool. Hmm. Oh, crap. 
Oh no! <laughs> She's scooting so far back. <laughs> Extra long legs. Like, her legs are still under the table, but she's scooted so far away. <laughs> oh, well, you feel her pulling away. Well, you can also see it because she's physically pulling away from you. All signs point to losing this friendship. You're so sorry you tell her it won't happen again. Um, yeah. Sorry. No offense. But it's not cool to lie about stuff like that. It's pretty weird. She's completely detached now, barely even looking at you. It was nice to meet you, but it's probably best if you just go. See you, space moo beast boy. It hurts as much. Uh, as much as it hurts, you have to agree. It's probably best to just cut your losses. You try not to let your disappointment show as you walk away. No. Man, we're losing terribly to L Word. Man! Almost 30 minutes of this girl. Just please. Fake date. It's cool. You say that could be cool. You say it super casually. Like you pretend to be in relationships with the aliens every day of your life. Because most of the time it actually kind of is. L Word grins. Clearly please. You're sure this was the right choice. Then again, you thought that that before only to end up in terrifying painful situations. But you're pretty confident this time it'll be fine. That's great. Thanks for doing me a solid. I'll owe you one. She shoots you a finger gun and winks. Double pistols and a wink. Sorry. Oh wow, that poster automatically drew me in. I'm like, what the hell is that? Anyway. Is that Troll Avril Levine? Who is that over on the side over there? What is, what is you? But I like you have a treasure chest. Gotta make sure you guys have, uh, you know. Uh, gotta stick with that aesthetic of treasure hunting. Okay, for Cerulean Bloods. In what is now a deeply familiar story beat, Elward takes you back to her hive. It's pretty messy. You can understand why her ex would have had a hard time finding something she left here. You don't see any signs of Eleusis, but it's probably rude to ask about that, with how often trolls and other animals are murdered in this society. You ask Elward if you could get their story straight. Like, how did you meet? How long have you been dating? Who's the funny one? Who always gets to choose the food on date nights? Oh yeah, I got like a 3,000 word backstory for us to memorize. I'll be quizzing you on my fave movies. JK. <laughs> I'm not worried, lol. We can just wing it. Oh, I think she's here anyway. Sure enough, you hear a crisp knock at the door. Elward leans against the nearest wall and crosses her arms over her chest, looking bored. Come in, girl. Oh, hey! What up, girl? Girlfriend. I wonder if we skip to this, like, plot first, if things would have made sense. Who knows? But yay! It's our, uh, it's our mom. Sweet. Okay. Now the troll enters the hive. Hey, wait a second! You know this one! This troll is already your friend! That might be a good thing, but it also might ruin your chances with the friend you're currently chasing! But maintaining your existing friendship is important, too. You're gonna have to find a way to balance this. Doesn't seem to have noticed you yet. Hello, Elward. I don't remember her voice. Crap. We can make this, l make this the last time we have to see each other! <laughs> if you want, we if you would just hand over my favorite sweater... I don't have it. I don't know how many times I gotta tell you. It's sim very simple. One, I was wearing it over here when we broke up. Two, I keep careful track of all my belongings. Three, you think it's funny to antagonize me. All signs point to you having it. I don't want to fight again. It's nicer if we... Isn't it nicer if we collaborate? Who's fighting? I don't even remember what your sweater looks like. I don't really think about it. Or you. At all. Ever. Emotional dishonesty is a barrier to helpful communication. Ugh. I am not one of your little jades who have to listen to this crap. Okay, whatever. I'm gonna get dragged back into this. I'm not gonna get dragged back into this. You're interrupting my date, Bronya. More like boring ya. LMAO. I'm actually trying to hang out with someone who's not you right now. 
a real cutie. Oh man, oh no, Elward makes a gesture at you as if to indicate that pointing you out to Branya is barely holding her interest. You look at Branya and try to smile, you lift your hand in a tentative way. Hi, you say? Branya is taken aback. <laughs> she looks back and forth between you and Elward a couple times, trying to make sense of the situation. You? And Elward? Well, this is a surprise. I didn't know you were looking for a romantic connection. I could have introduced to you to some of my other jades. Not that I mind that you're with Elward. She's sweating, though. I wish only for the best in all that she does. Elward rolls her eyes theatrically, then she looks back at you. You two know each other. She doesn't look happy about it. You remember that the reason she wanted a fake date with you in the first place was to hold your cool alien status over her ex's head. Branya, already knowing you, has undoubtedly taken some of the wind out of her sails. You have to do something to turn this around. You don't want to be rude to Branya, but surely just hyping Elward is safe. You tell Branya thanks for the offer, but you're happy with the choices you've made. She looks a little hurt, but quickly rebounds. Of course. I could, wouldn't tell you how to conduct your personal life. I'm really just here for my sweater. Can you get it, please, Elward? L nah, lol. You just lost it. Stop making excuses to come over here. This is getting pretty personal. You try to make yourself as unobtrusive as possible, pulling the collars of your, well, Tagora's robe. Are we still wearing Tagora's robe? Jeez up to hide your face. Someone might accuse you of manufacturing reasons for me to keep coming over. By not giving it back? Lol. Okay, whatever. I'll just let you know if it turns up, alright? Not alright. One, you've said that before and you never followed through. Two, you never contact me first. Three, you're obviously not motivated to find it. I want to settle this once and for all. It's time to resolve our conflict. Jeez. I didn't steal your freaking sweater. Look, I want to resolve this too. But now just isn't a good time. Can't you just let me have some time with my new pal here? Hmm. It does seem like a reasonable request. This may take longer than I would have liked. Suppose I could leave it for now, but you can't just keep avoiding me forever. Not of just about the sweater. I'm not doing that. Ugh, didn't you get enough of talking about our feelings when we were actually together? Why do we have to talk about them now? Talk about it later then. Let's talk about it later then. I'd rather leave my friend here out of it, actually. Her friend? Wow, did you breathe a sigh of relief? You don't have many friendships yet that could stand to lose one. You can now listen to the rest of the conversation with a touch more ease. I'll come back when you're more available. Please try to work with me on this. Thank you. Branyo makes her way out. Elward watches her leave and then sags back against the wall, scowling. She seems to be in much lower spirits than she was earlier. Your heart aches. Friend or no, you want to see her cheer up again. You know what? She takes a deep breath and looks over at you. I do have her sweater. It's back in my in the back of my closet. <laughs> she starts laughing. You giggle a little too. What just happened here is an opening. You witness something revealing and now Elward is in vulnerable position. You don't want to push her or annoy her, but she did loop you into this and you can't waste this opportunity. It might be worth it to take a risk. You say hesitantly that it seems like Branya was really desperate, like she's totally not over it. I know, right? Told you. You say that also, it's okay to not be over in it in 100% yet. Even if a relationship was wrong and you're way better off without it, sometimes you can still feel a little sad. It's fine. In fact, you say it can make you seem emotionally deep in an extremely cool way. You give her a little smile. She smiles back. <laughs> Thanks for saying that. You're really nice. You didn't have to do all that for me. Sorry for bringing you into this mess. You still want to get that drink? You're a good friend. 
Your heart overflows! You beam a brilliant smile at her. You feel the warm blood of your friendship opening its sweet petals in your heart. Friendship achieved! Victory! Friendship! Boom! Boom! Okay. Clickety click. Clankety clank. Let's go talk to the, the pair. Oh, and we can actually scroll here? Okay. Hopefully theirs isn't too long. 35 minutes is such a long time. Okay. Uh, cultural knowledge. Romance is complicated. Don't want that, though. Friendship is all we need. And we love it. Okay. Uh, cuprum and follicle. Wandering deeper into the city, you wash up on the shores of what looks like a rougher part of town. Comparatively, everything about Alternia is rough, but down here, the streets get narrower, dingier. The buildings are run down. Streetlights flicker, and the patrolling drones look less inclined to serve and protect, and more likely to shoot you and claim it as self-defense. You haven't seen any tracks, but if you had, this place would definitely be the wrong side of them. Again, empathetically, you don't know what you're talking about. Everything you know has been gleaned from exceedingly painful trial by fire. But this looks like the sort of place no one cares about except the people who live there. A group of noise, a gr noisy group of trolls spills into the streets up ahead, and you quickly duck behind a row of garbage cans. Oh, well. The obey signs. You have recently become gun-shy around groups, especially since most of these guys look fancy and are wearing symbols in varying shades of blue. Not real, not to generalize, but blue bloods are starting to freak you out. Everybody here messes with you, but the higher castes do it with a government sanction. These particular blue bloods all look as lost as you did several friends ago, gazing around in varying flavors of amusement and frustration. They glance around nervously between each other and the looming buildings on either side. Oh. Hi there. <laughs> okay, which one's fo follicle? I don't know. I think it's him, because he's bouncing up and down. <laughs> lol, 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 lol. With a hot jolt of adrenaline, you realize you aren't the only person hiding in a pile of garbage. There's someone there. Two someones, actually. Is it the volume button? I can't see in the dark. Yes. Okay. Okay. Two someones, actually. What you initially take as one large lumpy troll resolves on a second glance of two smaller trolls. A girl and a boy. The girl is clinging to the boy's back, like a very greasy sloth. It looks like a pretty precarious position, in your opinion. You've recently become an expert in falling down. They're both skinny and stringy, and dang, you thought the smell from the gar- it was the smell from the garbage, but it might be them. Okay. Lol lol lol. Blue's just busy living their pathetic lives. Just walking out of their hives. Straight into our trap. Idiots. Never see it. Coming. Okay, so follicle- yeah. Follicle's the girl. Okay. You ask if they mean the trolls out on the street. Probably you should just mind your own business. But what have you ever when have you ever done that before? Also, it's nice to see someone besides you getting mocked for once. You kind of want to join in on the mocking. Who the hell are you? Where did you come from? A trash creature. Born out of trash. Lol. Well, so much for not getting mocked. These two are probably equal opportunity mockers, though. They mock anyone. They're kind of like Polypa. Kind of like Polypa had been with murder. They keep snickering. You can't help thinking you're being called out. Stick up for yourself or take it lying down. Well, who cares at this point? Uh, I'm gonna take it lying down. You never thought about weirdly sexual idiom that is. Regardless, you decide to swallow your protest. Hey, that's pretty sexual also. Thanks, English language. <laughs> you don't want to start out a friendship with hostility. If, but if, if you had parents, they would have told you that two wrongs don't make a right. 
You could argue it isn't worth trying to befriend people who are open with insults, but that's just how people he are here. Since you gotta roll with it or get out of town, and since you literally can't go anywhere, you'll just roll, and you really, really want more friends. Addiction is a powerful thing. You admit that you don't have a lucis and that you're pretty used to insults these days. You include an effective shrug to demonstrate just how easily everything rolls off your back. You add in a contrite little kick at the pavement to hang your head even if you weren't quite sure what you did wrong. Lol. Rusty dunks on her own- on their own dang self. Don't have to do crap. This could be kind of relaxing for us. The girl turns her weird spidery face towards you. You should come hang out. Wait, what? You want to hang out with this bottom feeder? They look like a huge drag. I already have enough dead weight with your butt to drag around. Aw oh, man, you really hit the jackpot with these guys. Two friends for the price of one, Grandma. To answer your earlier question that you may have forgotten you asked Kuprum hacked their palm husk GPS to bring them down here idiots can't do anything without their fancy tech the blue bloods are arguing now somebody throws a punch you'll figure it's a good prank if a little mean spirited follicle keeps yanking at Kuprum's hair and looks at you wow you really are Pretty basic. Hey, Kuprum. She gives his hair another yank like it's reins and he's her horse. Kuprum grins and showing a bunch of big blunt teeth. He raises a hand that cack crackles with white hot energy. Whoa, your stomach clenches your feet leave the pavement just enough for your toes to drag along the ground as you float over to them. For a few seconds, you have zero control over your body. What else is new? Kuprum lets you go when you land hard enough on your heels to make your ankles twinge. One of the flickering streetlights shines down on Follicle's face. What you had initially had taken as deep-set eyes are actually no eyes. They're black holes in her face. It looks super creepy and also super painful. Yeah, so what? You think I would just have eyes like some kind of normie? You would never accuse her of that. That isn't really a word you have in your lexicon. LOL! He keeps doing that, saying the word instead of laughing. It's actually a hell of a power play. Idiot doesn't know a case of vo void rot when they see it. Have you ever met a gold blood before? Void rot. Interesting. You have, but you aren't sure if Sarava counts. They are in. They are an internet celebrity, for one thing. For one, they have eyes. Well, one eye. And the other one wasn't lost to Void Rot. Whatever the hell that is. You wonder if that's why she's on top of Kuprum. He's some kind of combination steed and seeing eye dog. Void Rot means my body doesn't retain energy like it's supposed to. Just look it up and gorgle. It means I'm dying constantly all the time. You almost point out that, that technically everyone is dying all the time, but you sense this isn't the moment for fake deep mess- <laughs> for fake deep stuff. That really sounds like it blows, though. You tell her how sorry you are. What do you me mean? What? What do you be sorry? You didn't do anything. Besides, stand there. Looking ugly. Idiot thinks it makes a difference. Like, they think actually- what- like what they think actually matters. Lol, 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 lol. Can't wait for Trizza to take this one down to the coal fields for a little R and R. Rest and relaxation. That sounds really. That sounds nice, actually. Rum it. Rumpage and rendering. Rampage and rendering. I can read. Ah. Uh. Wow. And here I. And here was me thinking we'd get through a whole conversation without bringing up. Precious Trizza. Lol, Trizza rules. I love Trizza. I know. Moron. You rack your recent memories, trying to figure out if you know what a Trizza is or who. Trizza is basically the third member of this relationship, considering how horny you are to get 
cybernetic tentacles up in you. Um, wow. What? Is that supposed to make me feel bad? Sounds great, actually. You watch too much Eastern Alternian pornography. It would be way better than sitting around with you. Always sucking me dry. This sure is something you're witnessing right here. Must be that Black Rom stuff Zebra had briefly filled you in on. You cock a hip and compliment them on the obviously incredibly healthy pitch romance they got going on there. Because as everyone knows, there's nothing two people in a lover's spat like more than someone interrupting them to spout random bits of cultural knowledge. Nah, they're probably Moirails. That separates them, metaphorically at least. Physically, Follicle stays clinging to Kukram's back. Wrong again. We're pale. Thank you! <laughs> Two seconds. It's incredibly dark in here. Where, oh where, is the light switch? Brightness! Ah, my face! Okay. That hurt. Okay. I thought they were pale. Yeah, they seem Moirails. So pale. Oh, pale. That's the nice one. The petting one. Where you talk about your feelings and then don't have sex. What? You got something to say? Uh... You guys really don't seem to have your stuff together. You guys seem like you have a wonderful stable relationship. Okay, saving. Close that menu. I'm just gonna be truthful and call it as I see it. You mentioned just offhandedly, chill as hell, that they might have a few things they need to work on. No pressure or anything. Just the this, this sort of stuff of a helpful friend does. Mentions shortcomings and crappy relationship dynamics. Having friends is great. The light glitters on Kuprum's goggles, even as it's sucked into the black hole of follicles, not eyes. You calling me out? You come into my hive spouting this? You don't point out that this is, you point out that this is a trash heap, though you don't want to judge. He might have a trash hive. It's a figure of speech. Kind of like go screw yourself. Both of them look angry, but Cooper looks extra angry. You know what the I know what this is. You're trying to steal my girl. You really think you can give Fall what she needs? What she craves? He's making it sound like a fetish rather than a medical condition. Maybe it's both. You really want to come at me, mother trucker? The hairs on the back of your neck stand on end, and that's how loud- That's just how loud he yells. Or maybe it's crackling of energy slowly emanating from his pores and building up like a s sine wave. At first you think it's just you finally crackling under the- cracking under the pressure, but it's really happening. The glow of white hot electricity rolls up his arms and shoulders and into follicle where it travels over the length of her body and centers where her eyes should be. She shivers and lets out a snort, slightly lewd sound. Her hands tighten on Kuprum's wild hair. Man, you really shouldn't be watching this. You're blushing something fierce. But okay, you think you get what's going on. It's kind of symbiosis. His energy overflows when he gets upset and Follicle sucks up the energy to treat her void rot. He is her giant battery. You remember Saraba mentioning that powerful gold bloods have a tendency to get harvested for their energy. Maybe Kuprum is one of those powerful psychics. Huh. He wishes. Triss is gonna chew him up and spit him out. Then I'm really gonna have to find another sucker to leech off. Follicle is looking at you, considering. Well, you aren't actually sure if she can see you. Definitely not with her eyes, since she doesn't have those. Maybe she's like a cricket. Don't they hear with their legs or something like that? What is this guy? Please. Sure. Why not? I'm getting sick of your crap. Anyway. Oh gosh, are they breaking up right in front of you? Oh jeez. That was scary. Don't scuttle again. Follicle crawls down off of Kuprum's back and starts and starts across the filthy alley floor towards you. Scuttly and bug-like. And now instead of yelling, Kuprum is snickering. Actual laughter, not lols. That's a good sign, right? It's great when friends can laugh together, especially when stuff gets awkward. You think you can power all the way... No, wait. You think you can...
empower me the way I need? Um, while well, she's sitting, she's right on your face. She really, really needs a shower. But you don't have room to talk. It's been a long time since Tagora's abolition trap. Besides, judging someone based on their personal hygiene is shallow, right? It's what's on the inside that counts. Yeah, you're sure that's the sort of thing that makes you deep? Try telling that to convention goers, man. Seriously, you have so much love to give. Friend love is the kind that you're talking about. Maybe this is what all that desperation has been leading up to. The slow raising of your friendship level and a power to reach this peak level of unbelievable bro power. To free this young gold blood from a codependent relationship, you've been conditioning your body, putting it through its paces, building up a tolerance to bull and it's bathing in a metaphor metaphorical resonance. Fol fo follicle kisses you. Wow, that is friendly. Lots of people kiss their friends, they're pretty sure. Maybe? Yeah. You're super progressive. This is fine. You sort of wish that the first alien tongue you had in your mouth didn't taste like Cheetos. But you did but you can't have anything in this can't have everything in your this life. But holy crap, you're doing it. You feel a rush of energy flow through you, lighting up your whole body and pouring into follicle, filling her to the brim with the power she needs, the power she craves. Oh my gosh, you're the best friend ever. It's you, you rock, you seriously LOL R Lol, 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 lol. The best. Lol, 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 lol. Oh, son of a gun. You feel something warm at the back of your neck, and Kuprum is giggling right next to your ear. Somehow, while you were busy kissing his girlfriend, he snuck up from behind you and started kissing you, too. Well, more than just putting his tongue in you, moving his tongue around, he must be feeding psychic energy into you, which Follicle is sucking out of your mouth. They're really using you like a freaking copper wire. You could maybe be into it if you weren't behind a dumpster, and if you weren't looking for anything more than a good old-fashioned wholesome friending. Kupram, screw off. Don't help. You aren't involved in this. Kupram is still laughing and he's adding the lols back in, which you like even less when they're pressed against your neck. He steps back and the flood of energy lets up. You go from feeling like a light bulb to feeling like a steady deflating balloon. Follow Let's see, Follicle kisses you again, and it still tastes like Cheetos, but also like dying? Like your entire body has been placed in a juicer and a giant is squeezing down? Your muscles twitch and drool drips out of the corner of your mouth. Oh, we out. Follicle must have been the only thing holding you up, because she steps back and you slump to your knees, then go to your side. Your fall is broken by some rotten fruit. Cool. Follicle stands silhouetted against the streetlight in all of her greasy glory. Thanks, Normie. That'll hold me for, like, maybe the next 15 minutes. Failure! The fog closes in as you lie on the filthy pavement. Is this the fog of your death or just impending unconsciousness? You don't know. One thing for sure, though. This is not the fog of impending friendship. Dang. We lose. Good day, sir. Let's try that again. Wonderful stable relationship. Right. Glad you understand. You don't feel great about this. It's not cool to tell lies, especially not to your new friends, but it's also not cool to neg your new rad new friends relationship, especially when you don't know how the heck any of this stuff works. Honestly, you should probably come up with some sort of mnemonic for just how little you know about everything at all. You don't know what that means. Uh, YDK WTM. And you'll workshop it. Lol. Well, you actually seem okay. Obviously a huge normie freak. But okay. You wonder what kind of people Kuprum has been hanging out with if he thinks you look normal. To be this, at this point you're, what, dressed in a bathrobe, sunburned, slathered in sparkly lotion, and probably a bunch of other stuff you can't remember right now. His friends must look really wild. You hope whoever these friends are will be your friends too. You aren't picky about looks. The group of blue bloods come out onto the street. Maybe they could use some friends too. You're getting the vapors just at the thought of all these potential connections. You start around the dumpster to... You start around the dumpster to find out. Kuprum back grabs the back of your shirt. Where do you think you're going? Idiot tries to make decisions for themselves. The decisions are bad. Well, uh, that's true. Nobody's surprised. Lol, 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 lol. 
You point out very respectfully that all these people look pretty lost and confused. You assume the prank is over now, and everyone can shake hands and go on as friends. This is idiotic considering what you've learned about Alternia up till now. Not a prank. This is war. It's not over until all of them are dead or crying. Hmm. Well, okay. As long as you aren't the one dead or crying. None of the high bloods look close to doing either, though. They're standing in a clump in the center of the street, nervous but fine. This is just a minor inconvenience, like a flat tire or a spilled cup of coffee. They have been lured into the slums by some greasy nerds, but Follicle and Kuprum don't seem to plan on doing anything besides watching them and giggling. One of the blue bloods, a smallish girl with a cerulean symbol in her hair clips, is standing a little apart from the group, furiously texting. That moment when a dirty blue blood girl starts losing her cool. Should have known one of them would crack. You aren't sure what's going on. <laughs> you, know, you are. Okay, you don't know anything. Still not great. Riggler is calling the drones. Usually, high bloods wouldn't go running to them like that. Don't want to admit. Low bloods got no one over. Got one over on them. When you get owned, own it. That could go on a t-shirt. Follicle and Kuprum seem bummed that their prank is going to, end, going to end so fast and with so little damage done. But isn't that the point of a prank? That everyone gets out of it relatively unscathed? Everything more, anything more and it becomes assault. Overhead is a whir and a clank, loud but not loud enough to prepare you for the dang flying bus coming in for a landing on the street. Holy crap. You don't think you've been so excited about public transportation. You're confident that continuing your ramble across this alien world is the best thing for you, but gosh, it would be nice to rest your feet for a little while. Even better, none of the trolls getting on the bus seem to have any money or travel passes. Perfect. You don't have any of those things either. You start around the trash pile again, and this time two pairs of hands grab onto the back of your shirt. Dude, where the hell are you going? You quickly explain that you have to catch the bus before it takes off again. You have no idea how long it'll be before another one arrives. Follicle and Kuprum look at you like you're crazy. Well, Kuprum looks at you and Follicle just kind of off over your shoulder. Can you call it by looking if someone doesn't have eyes? Okay. Listen, I know we made jokes about the intelligence of everybody around us. It's our thing. But you are actually mentally handicapped. You can't just get on a chartered scuttle buggy. That's for Cerulean and up. Maybe Teal, if they got a death wish. Uh, this is a this dang hemospectrum thing again. You really need someone to sit down and explain exactly how this all works, preferably without calling you an idiot the whole time or hitting on you. It just seems so arbitrary. At least the oppressive power structures from your planet make sense. Well, no, they don't actually, but you're used to them, which makes them much better and more acceptable. You came back as all the blue bloods get on the bus. It occurs to you that even though it was their prank that lured the blue bloods down there, Follicle and Kuprum had to watch it all unfold from behind a dumpster. They don't dare do anything head on. Not that you support this randomly attacking people on the street, but it is kind of messed up that only a certain kind of violence is acceptable, aimed at a very specific direction. Judging from how easily Kuprum picked on picked you up with his brain, he could hold his own in a fight no problem. The bus takes off, blasting a backdraft that rattles the empty cans and crumpled bits of garbage in the gutter. Stillness descends on the alley. Wow, that was anticlimactic. Kuprum said that they were calling the drones, but a bus came instead. Maybe calling the drones can be a bunch of things, like calling 911 can be a report for robbery, assault, or someone's leg falling off. Or that's what you think until you hear the distant but quick closing pound of giant footsteps. Man. Time to go! Follicle wraps her arms more securely around Kuprum and then takes off, like literally takes off. At first you think he's wearing those shoes with the little wheels at the bottom that kind of kids wear to crash into stuff at the mall. 
But no, he's hovering half an inch off the ground. You have to run to keep up with him, and your steps are distressingly loud on the pavement. A familiar weightlessness shoots through your limbs and settles your guts. Energy crackles around you, picking you off the ground and putting you along behind them. He has enough power to float both of you at once, all while carrying his girlfriend on his back. You don't know much about psychics, but that's pretty dang impressive. The three of you around a corner and forget all about being impressed because you are too busy freaking out. You were so busy worrying about the drone coming from behind you that you did not consider the possibility of one closing in from the front. This is one this one is smallish, but it's still a lot bigger than you, and a lot spinier, and more endowed with la dangerous lasers, and it's focused on the three of you instead of someone else. You, Follicle, and Cupra make a similar noise. It goes a bit like <laughs> The smash at the end comes from Cooper and picking all three of you up with his brain and tossing you, just as the drone shoots a laser out of its torso. Whoa. It blasts the pavement where you've been standing into craggy smoking chunks. You tumble feet over butt into an alley wall. A concerning pain twinges through your healing ribs, but you're just so used to Andrews at this point you barely wince. What's more concerning is Follicle. The blast rips her off Cooperum and sends her in the opposite direction against the alley wall with you. She immediately curls into a ball like a pill bug with a lot of hair. She doesn't respond when you ask her if she's okay and you aren't sure if you should touch her. You shouldn't move injured people, right? Especially not injured people with void rot. I'm fine. I'll live. Oh crap. The drone had a 50-50 chance of coming in your direction instead of Cooperum's and surprise, it did. It moves altogether way too fast for something that size. Aren't big things supposed to be slow? That's what video games taught you. Video games wouldn't lie, would they? Anime is real, right? Sorry. <laughs> Water. Ah, oh, crap. Hell. You made it all this way, dodged so many dangers, and made so many friends, and now you're just gonna get lasered by some huge spiky robot monster thing. Are they even robots? They kind of look organic, but so do, like, the couches here. But you digress, it's going to kill you. But instead of dealing a quick, fatal blow, the drone stops in the center of the street. Its big, ugly head swivels towards Follicle. Oh, no! Is it possible you found someone more cullable than you are? Alternia definitely doesn't seem like a place to be the weakest link. As usual, you're next to useless. All you can do is watch as the drone takes heavy steps towards her. Desperate, you kick a nearby trash can. You shout to make as much noise as pos as you can, trying to draw its attention. Once you have it, you aren't sure what you're going to do with it, but you aren't worried about that right now. It's the drone grinds to an uncertain halt. Its head slowly turns towards you, then back to Follicle. It can't make up its mind. Should it go for Voidrod or the noisy idiot? You look around for weapons while it's frozen in indecision. There's nothing here but empty bottles and tiny pieces of concrete. You really are worthless, wreck. Your new friend is about to get stomped or blasted or kicked with a giant metal leg, and all you can do is hop around like a maniac and smack a trash can. Ugh. Luckily, for once, you aren't the only one here. Your new friend already has a friend. You're really friend crashing here. Whoop. Ew. Gosh. Cooperum doesn't screw around. He r rises up on a wave of crackling power, attacking the drone by, well, basically just putting his hands on its big, ugly head and discharging as much energy as possible, frying whatever brainstem the thing has. You try to be at least a little bit useful and drag Follicle out of the way as the drone of the drone as it sh as it falls, but it doesn't fall; it just shuts down. The red evil. The evil red glow of its eyes dies and it goes still. It becomes just an ugly giant statue of an alien robot in the middle of a filthy street. Cooperum drops like a rock and before he's even out of the air, he's on his way to Follicle. He shoves you out of the way. Fall, are you okay? Please say you're okay, what the hell? Fall. Follicle buries her face in Cooperum's chest, her two little fists clinging tight to his arms. Her shoulders rise and fall. She's taking huge breaths like she can't get her lungs to work right. Do trolls even have lungs? They probably call them something weird. Respiratory sex. Breath glands. Suck sphincters. I'm fine. Idiot. You had a snide comment all ready to go. Concerning appreciating your loved ones while you can be a... Bef <laughs> Concerning appreciating your loved ones while you can before a big metal monster comes and squishes them. But sitting there watching Cooper hold Falco like 
follicle like he never wants to let go? Well, all your snideness drains into a puddle at your feet. You don't know them. You don't know their life. Their relationship might not be the healthiest, but honestly, whose is? You've seen some really bad stuff, both here and back home. Hey, you okay, dork? Yeah, you, you, you are, thanks to them. Victory! We're just standing off to the side while this friendship huddle goes down. But yay, we completed it. Oh man, my throat hurts from talking so long. Okay, let's take a look at our friend count. We got two on this row. Keep in mind that the ones that are already uncovered don't count. They were just came they came that way, I swear. Anyway, that's all for now. I will see you all next time for more friend sim. We'll be going to what is it? Volume what? Oh, volume seven. Swish. Okay, I will see you all next time. Bye! Hey there. Consider becoming a patron, just like the phenomenal Gerald Thomas, Bleed Red, and Alexander Madeline.